Good day everyone, my name is Graphics. Today we'll be looking at an aspect in the electric circuit that talks about voltage drop. Now, if you look at this circuit here, it is a closed loop. And this is a source. And there is a battery. The longer side of the battery here is positive, while the shorter side is negative, right? Now this battery produces a current, we call it a voltage, it produces a current, I, because like I said in my earlier video, then I moves around the circuit, right? So we know that since I is moving around the circuit, we see even around the circuit through each resistor, resistor 1, resistor 2, resistor 3, we say the three resistors are in series, so we say that my arrow equivalent is just times my arrow total is equals to what arrow one plus arrow two plus arrow three right now we know very well that my arrow one is two my arrow two is three and my arrow three is four and this will give in nine ohms because resistance is measured in ohms right now I want to know this current that is flowing through each resistor. Then I'm going to remember Ohm's law. Recall that what V is equal to what I R, which is our what Ohm's law. That states that the current, the voltage flowing through the length of the wire, is directly proportional to what the current, provided that what the resistance is what is constant. Now, if I make my resistance, if I make my resistance here, my current, the solid of the formula, I'll be having I equals to what? V over R. This V here is my V total, which is given as what? 27. And my R here is my R total, which is given as what? 9. So I can easily say that my 9, my I, is equals to what? 27 divided by 3 and that will be 3 so the unit for current is what? amperes are we good? and that is 1 now we want to know the voltage drop that if this current passes through this resistor we want to know the voltage drop in this circuit now one thing you need to understand is that resistor provides resistance to the flow of current so when a voltage shock produces a current. As current is trying to flow to the resistance, what happens? The resistance reduces the flow of the current. Right? It reduces the flow of the current. As it does that, what do you notice? It starts dissipating heat. That is why when you plug appliances on an electric circuit or on, a, on, on your power supply, you notice that as time goes on, this elements your phones your laptop your tv set they start getting hot because of what there are some resistors inside this tv set that turns to over resistance to the flow of current so your resistor here acts as a load so what does it do it brings down current it reduces the speed and the flow of current as it's reducing the speed and flow of current what it is speed heat it starts getting hot so when this i flow to this resistor one there will be a voltage drop across I1. So we say that my V1 is equal to what? The I flowing through I times what? The R1. That means what is flowing through. That is your V1. Right? So from here, I can easily say that my V1 will now give me what is I? I is giving us what? 3 ohms. Right? 3 amperes. So it will be 3 times the arrow 1, that is where I is flowing through, will give me what? 2. So our V1, the voltage drop across the arrow 2 ohms, the arrow 1, is what? 6 volts. That is for our V1 here. Now, if the same I, because they are in series, this same I, which is equal to what? Which is equal to 3 amperes that we've calculated for. If it is flowing through through um, 
the next resistance resistor here it will be the resistor will offer it resistance so if it's flowing through here if you want to get the drop joint to be what v2 so we say that our v2 is equal to the i flowing through v2 multiplied by what r2 and v2 will be giving us what 3 times 3 because the resistance here is 3 ohms and the current flowing through is i is 3 so my v2 will be giving us what 9 amperes i is v2 is that taking now also that is not all this same current is going to flow through r3 so the voltage drop across r3 ohms r3 resistor will giving us what v3 is equals to what i r3 so my v3 we're given now what is the i i is 3 the r3 is giving us 4 the resistance of we're giving us 4 so v3 is equals to what 12 volts sorry this one is volt not amperes giving us what 12 volts how good so if you notice the total volts here so we now say that my v total hmm, or the v total of v equivalent is equals to what v1 plus v2 plus v3 now from here the v total will now be is what r v is equal to what r r right so that is home slot slow so anywhere I see V I'm going to put what times I R because V is I R so my P will give me what I square R because I times I is I square times R so when current and resistance is given we we'll use this but when voltage is given we we'll use this right so look at this now. If I calculate the power here, add this. We look for P1. Right? If I calculate the power produced here, this is P2. If I calculate the power produced here, this is what? P2. Right? So we know initially that the power 1 is equal to what? I v1 or the power at resistor 1 is equal to what r square r1 i will do now see what i want to do for one calculated earlier we know v1 is what 6 volts i believe so but v1 is equal to what 6 volts and I is equal to what? 3 amperes. So if I put my value here, I will say my P1 is equal to 3 times V1, which is what? 6. So my P1 is equal to what? 18 watts. Or I say my P1 is equal to my I is what? 3 square AB and R1 is what? 2 ohms times 2. So my P1 is equal to what? 9 times 2. And my P1 is equal to what? 18, 18 watts. Right? Can you see that we are having the same answer? So it depends on which approach you want to take. Either you follow the first approach whereby you look for the voltage drop to calculate the power, or you follow the second approach where you, where you just go straight to the point by using the current and the resistance value there. That is power. So we'll do the same for P2. So for P2, if we do the same, we we'll have the same value for P3 and so on and so forth. Is that okay now? So like for P2, uh, P2 will be giving us what? Uh, also I V2, right? So what is I? I is 3 multiplied by what? Multiplied by V2. What is V2? V2 is giving us what? 9 volts. So I can use a place for my 9 volts here. This is 9. So my P2 is equal to what? Uh, 27 watts. 
because power is measured in watts. So if you do the same thing here, you also have the same value. I can move further, I have the same value, right? So I can say that my P2 is equal to what? I square R2. And that will give me my I is 3 square. My R2 is giving us what? 3. So I'll place it here. I'll have my multiply by 3. So we'll be having 9 times 3. And that also be what? 27 watts. Right? So if we do the same thing, we also have our P3 27 watts. We also have our P3, this is P2 here. Right? And this is what? P1 here. P1, P2. So we can do the same for P3 also. I'll get our value. So we are told the total watts. Our P total will give me P1 plus P2 plus P3. We give you what? Your P total power dissipated in that circuit. So that is how you go about this. But if you want to know the total power, you can easily use your formula that says that what? P total is equal to what? I total times what? V total. So P total will be what is our I total, which is 3. Our V total is what? 27. So 3 times what? 27. So that will give us, um, we are having 81 watts. Right? So that is how to calculate the power. Right? So either you say the total power is the total current and the total voltage, or you add all the individual power across each resistor. All good, and you get your power. So thank you for watching. We we'll meet now.